what is good youtube and welcome back to a brand new video and today we're back here to do a wizards rebuild but usually when i do a wizard rebuild as of late i've always like blown them up or trade away beal or trade away porzingis and just kind of blow the team up and go in a different direction but today since the wizards seem so keen on keeping beal and being a competitive roster and the timing of it's kind of right because they've won like five straight we're gonna just try to win a championship with bradley beal i don't know how this is gonna work we are going to try. So let's go ahead and jump into this. I don't even know what I'm going to call it, but this building a championship with Bradley Beal Wizards rebuild. Let's go. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like in this one. Of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel. As always, greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for the continued support y'all show me. You guys are absolutely amazing. Here's to 2023. Still early on, obviously, as we know. So the Washington Wizards, as we know, kind of an interesting roster. We assume Kyle Kuzma will be moved at the deadline. And uh, if there was like this was a selling team, I think you obviously are trying to get a first round pick for him. But since we're going to be trying to win a championship with Beal and probably Porzingis as well as kind of our top two dogs. And we'll figure out what we can do with the rest of the roster. I kind of want to get something really good for Kyle Kuzma. And there's been something that's kind of been floated around. That I've seen a couple times just kind of on some articles or just suggested and some other things I've read. Uh, so I have an idea for Kyle Kuzma instead of just getting a first round pick for him. I have a different idea and you guys already probably know where I'm going with this. There's a power forward that's always been in rumors and trade and uh, you know maybe he'll finally get traded and this team is actually struggling as well. And that is the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, John Collins. I mean the Wizards I guess it would be such a Wizards thing I feel like to trade for John Collins. Uh, potentially for Kyle Kuzma I, I don't know maybe they're not really into that I don't know what you know what would I don't know it's just something I kind of want to do in this game so Kyle Kuzma John Collins and then I also give them DeLon Wright something like that uh maybe I could squeeze a first out of them as well that'd be kind of nice if I can get like a first round pick for uh you know Kyle Kuzma but they are giving me John I don't know we could try that let's see if they accept they don't agree to that that's fair okay what if we did a 2026 Spurs swap? Maybe we can do something like that. So we'll go down here. That's still one and a half stars. Okay. We got a first round pick for Kuzma and John Collins. I will take that. So John Collins is our brand new power forward. A lot younger than Kyle Kuzma. So that is the first addition to the team. John Collins on the Washington Wizards. I don't know how well this season is going to go for us. We got Monty Morris, Bradley Beal, Danny Avdia, John Collins, Porzingis, Gafford, Hachimura, Corey Kispert and Will Barton and then Johnny Davis, of course. Uh, yeah, so down there in the rotation as well. So we'll see how the rest of the season goes. I'm not expecting too much. Obviously, in the offseason, if this team is going to be a contender today, we got to really figure out like what we're going to do because clearly what we have right now, I don't think is going to get a lot of love in the simulation. Hey, but we'll see. I'm going to probably try to resign Porzingis. Maybe I could trade him away. Uh, maybe I could do that or whatever. We'll, we'll probably resign him. Keep Beal. And Porzingis as our two main guys. And then Collins will develop hopefully as well. And then maybe we could flip like Morris, Gafford, and Avdia and Johnny Davis as a package for something nice in the offseason or something. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props app that allows you to choose overs or unders on your favorite players that you enjoy watching each and every day. It is available on mobile or desktop, and this is how it looks. They give you the number, and you're going to choose over or under on it. They pretty much have every sport you can imagine, whether it's soccer, NFL, NHL. They have a ton of different options, so this is how it works. You choose between two to six players, two being three times your money, all the way up to six players, 25 times your money. Price Picks has just elevated my watching experience to a whole new level. So if you want to sign up, I also have some of my entries as examples here. That way you can kind of see how it works. But if you want to sign up, links in the description. Use code CRUSHABLES. They match your deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. Thank you, Price Picks, for sponsoring today's video. So at the end of the season, uh, the season didn't go as we would have wanted it to, obviously. Bradley Bill averaged 29, which is really nice. He had 22 from Porzingis, 14 from John Collins, 11 from Rui Achimura, and then 10.5 from Monte Morris. Nine from Gafford and then eight from Corey Kispert. Let's simulate the playoffs and uh, we got to figure out what we're going to do this offseason. Clearly, we have some assets to make a trade, especially if this Wizards roster, like I said, they're going to continue to stick with Beal. They do have some assets. So I'm going to try to potentially make a trade happen. LeBron James retires. I'm going to leave that the way it is. Draft lottery time. Uh, let's see if our pick falls in here. The Thunder apparently have it, but it might be protected. Um, which is going to be the case. We have the eighth pick as well to use as ammunition. So obviously we could draft here, but with the eighth pick, Johnny Davis 
And then Danny MD, I don't think will be on his option yet, but uh, we could definitely make a trade. I, I really do feel like we could go for something here. So that's probably going to be the game plan. Uh, you know, look at me hiring my post defensive coach before I hire my head coach. But regardless, got Derek Manis out here. Might be the best head coach available now that I kind of went that direction. Will Hardy uh, is here and he has pretty good ratings. So, I mean, at least he's a real person. So, you know what? Give me Will Hardy. He has no other offers. So, Will Hardy is my new head coach here in Washington. And we'll roll with that. So let's go to the draft night. And uh, like I said, I don't plan on drafting with this eighth overall pick. I'm going to try to make something magical happen around Bradley Beal. So right now, our trade package would be Monte Morris, $9 million. Gafford making about, he's actually solid backup center. So if I don't trade him, I'm glad to have him on the roster. But uh, that gets me to like $21 million. And then you have Corey Kispert. Nope, John Davis still on a contract. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then you have like Anthony Gill down here. So we have some money to throw at someone. So let's take around the league or take a look around the league. I don't even care. I mean, the main thing we kind of need is a point guard, I would say. Like Danny of Dio, we can kind of rely on to maybe develop at the small forward spot. Point guard is kind of our biggest hole right now because obviously Porzingis and Collins is going to be kind of our front court going forward most likely. So I think if we can get like a really good point guard here, that'd be ideal. Immediately, a guy that makes a lot of sense, but uh, also would be a huge risk because we don't know what his future really is in the NBA. Lonzo Ball. I mean, the Bulls obviously in kind of a weird spot right now, uh, but we are going to try to get Lonzo Ball on the Chicago Bulls, I think. I think that's kind of the most ideal point guard I would like to have next to Bradley Beal when he is healthy. Obviously, the guy can defend, shoot threes. He's, he's kind of exactly what I'd want. So if I can get Lonzo Ball, and it might not even cost that much to get him, I might even be able to get away with keeping Monte Morris or Gaffer, especially if the Bulls go into rebuild mode, obviously. So like Johnny Davis, I'd be cool trading Johnny Davis because the times I have kept him, he has not developed at all very... He hasn't developed nicely at all in this game for me. So not really concerned about keeping Johnny Davis. So Isaiah Todd, Johnny Davis, Anthony Gill. I mean, I'm getting... And then maybe we could trade our that pick we got in that trade for Lonzo and maybe they would agree to that. And just like that, they do. So Lonzo Ball... Brand new point guard here in Washington. So just like that, we kind of have a new big four for this Wizards roster here. The you know the Hawks are just happy to walk away with the young piece and Giant Davis, see if they can make something out of them. And we kept our depth on top of that. So Monty Morris and Gafford are really two really good bench pieces. And then Hashimura and then Dan Dio, Corey Kispert are guys we're probably going to bring back as well. And we kept that eighth overall pick. So that is just another guy we can bring to the table. So Webin Yama goes number one. So I'm feeling pretty good so far about how this rebuild is going. You got Jared Walker, Thompson, Nick Smith Jr. Give me Nick Smith Jr. off the bench. Actually, do I want Nick Smith or do I want like Derek Whitehead or um yeah, Nick Smith Jr. I'll take Nick Smith Jr. here. He's gonna be a really nice addition to this team. And then I don't know if we had another pick here. It was just a second round pick. I'll drive Caleb Love, who might take over eventually for uh Monte Morris. So we get a 77 overall and a 70 overall in round two, pick 30, which is pretty nice. Player options, you got Porzingis declining as expected. Dean Avdia, Corey Kispert, Vernon Carey. So the depth is actually going to be pretty decent. And then Rui Hachimura is somebody I want back as well. So our depth is going to be nice. It really is. And all we got to do is resign Porzingis. And we should be golden there. So Porzingis, give him a five-year deal. We are locked into this team. And uh, we're hoping we get something out of it. So Rui Hachimura is going to be my next guy that I do want back on the team. Three-year, 13000000 million. I'm cool with that. So boom, just like that, we have our full rotation, I think. So new rotation, Lonzo Ball, Monte Morris. You have Nick Smith Jr. who can easily play that backup shooting guard spot. Might be really good as well. Going to be our better Johnny Davis, I guess. And then Corey Kispert. You got Denny Avdia. You got Rui Echimura, John Collins. And you got Daniel Gafford and Porzingis. I mean, I kind of love what we're looking at. So the only thing I will do is move Corey Kispert to the three. And boom, just like that, you have a full rotation here in Washington. So... Will this team turn into anything? Well, that's a good question. Let's go to player progression and see where this starts us at. So you got Porzingis up. Lonzo Ball's up to an 85. So that's already a great start. John Collins up to an 83. Corey Kispert up to a 79. Abdia's up to a 78. Gafford's up. Nick Smith Jr. obviously didn't move. Monte Moore. So honestly, we'll see how this goes. And if we really want to, we could get cute at the trade deadline and make another trade because we already have a lot of salaries locked in. So we have a pretty good future here. Let's see if we can... Uh, you know, at least make the playoffs. At the very least, let's make the playoffs. I think that'd be a good start. So at the end of the season, we ended up finishing 52 and 30, which I think is something most Wizards fan would love to see. I mean, maybe if it didn't mean anything, I don't know how they feel about their team right now, but 24 from Bradley Beal, 23 from Chris Porzingis, 16 from John Collins, 13 and nine and a half from Lonzo. 
10 from Nick Smith Jr., who immediately made an impact. 10 from Corey Kispert. And then 10 from Daniel Gafford. 7 from Abdia. 7 from Monte Morris. So all around, very, very solid. Like I said, we could have made a trade. Right? Roy Atramara, even though I extended him, didn't even get minutes, which is not great, obviously. But uh, like I said, there's more trades on the horizon if we really want to make one. We're going to have to resign Lonzo this offseason. I, I assume he declines that player option. And Nick Smith Jr. is going to be a huge part of what we do going forward. And then uh, Kispert. I mean, we, it looks like we got to... Resign him as well. Gafford, very nice backup center. So overall, feeling pretty good. We get to the Atlanta Hawks, which is interesting because obviously we just made that trade with them to begin the video, but they did not keep Kyle Kuzma. And overall, the Murray Young experiment has been very shaky so far. Let's simulate Kerr around against them. I don't know if we beat them in round one. They have home court advantage. I kind of like my roster compared to theirs, but they do have Trey Young. So so many current round and we are going to get swept. So even though I like my roster better, Maybe that was my bias. We end up losing. So that's unfortunate. But the Hawks do go all the way to these cards finals. So I guess I can't be too discouraged. And you're going to have the Grizzlies beat the Cavaliers, which Donovan Mitchell dropped. What was it? 71 points last night. This man is a madman. He just is. There was so much going on in the sports world, good or bad last night, man. Crazy. It's just crazy. Feels good to have finally made the playoffs. But like I said, the main goal is to win a championship here. Guys like Dame and Bradley Beal have, you know, constantly said it. It would feel good. It just feels so much better to win a championship, uh, you know, to the team they drafted them. They love their cities, and uh, I respect that. But, you know, obviously you get a lot of uh, slack for it uh, across the fan base because most fans, you know, just love ring culture, I guess. But regardless, I mean, it's easy for me to say because I'm obviously a fan of Dame, but I, I can understand, I guess, from outside perspective on how people feel about a player staying with a certain team, especially... When uh, Portland had a GM for nine years who refused to, you know, take any risks. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. But And then had, like, no good starting forwards for, like, his, pretty much his whole career until up until now with Jeremy Grant and Josh Hart. But regardless, enough about that. Um, Rui Hachimura's contract, since I did resign him and he didn't play, kind of makes sense to probably trade him this offseason. We are going to be losing Monte Morris. We could just resign him, obviously. Damn deal, be a free agent. Kispert, I mean, if I can get some for Hachimura, I will. Um, as far as draft capital is concerned, I don't have it this year. So I think the biggest step here is to start off with a Hatchamara trade. I mean, I could trade Gafford as well on top of him. I and mean, we could. There's another big trade we could make if we really wanted to. Looks like I'm going to be trading Rui Hatchamara in a second round pick over to the Suns for Cameron Johnson to get a brand new power forward here. I think that'd be kind of a nice addition. He's going to be a little bit of a better overall than Rui Hatchamara and probably will crack the rotation immediately. Obviously, a really good shooter as well. Really unfortunate that he got hurt for Phoenix this year because I really think he had big things coming this year. Just a, such a good shooter. And it was going to really stretch the floor for Phoenix, obviously. I remember when he got hurt against the Portland, Bla uh, Portland Trailblazers in that game, he was kind of torching us from outside a little bit. So then you have Diaz, as a free agent I do want back. And then Corey Kispert also might want him back, even though we just got Cameron Johnson. So you know, Dia wants a lot of money, but of course, my top priority is Lonzo Ball. Let me go get Lonzo Ball back. That is my main priority. So get Lonzo back. W needed that. And then as far as I don't think we'll be getting Kispert back. Obviously, Nick Smith Jr. is going to be running that backup two spot, and he's probably going to progress like crazy here. Kispert actually still under contract, which I didn't even realize. But Cameron Johnson, Collins, and then you have Gafford and Porzingis. That kind of makes Dini of Dia a little bit more expendable. Or Mate more. So do I, I think I just go... I think I just get Evdia back and not worry about Monte Morris. So I think I give Evdia his deal, which I will. So we're going to give Danny Evdia a contract. Monte Morris, I won't resign, unfortunately. I'm probably just going to let him go go to a new team because he might even go down an overall. So we're going straight to player progression again. And we all we did was bring in Cameron Johnson. So I don't know if I expect anything to change. The biggest thing is Nick Smith Jr. has developed into an 81 overall. So immediately... That just makes the bench that much better. And DNF Dia also developed like crazy. So Porzingis and Beal say the same. Lonzo went up one. And then John Collins. And so the bench, the depth is a lot better. Uh, I'm feeling pretty confident about, you know, just with the development of Nick Smith Jr. That this team could eventually win a championship. I don't know if it'll be this next season, though. That's going to be a little too optimistic thinking. But still very excited with the amount of bench that we have. The depth that we have. And Beal and Porzingis leading the way. I think we could win it. You never know. Tatum wins MVP, Booker wins Rookie of the Year, Victor Webanyama on the Wi- or the, I wish he was on the Wizards, on the Rockets, Sixth Man of the Year, AD Defensive Player, Jalen Suggs wins Most Approved, and Steven is your Coach of the Year, and uh, here's your NBA First Team. I don't know if we get, like, Beal representing, because we actually have a really good team, Lonzo Ball, all defensive first team, 
Really love the addition of him. He is developing to an 87 overall. So, I mean, he's been kind of the game changer at this point. And uh, we're the first in the East. So, I said that I would love to win a championship with this Wizards team. I didn't know if it would happen in this video. But, uh, Nick Spencer averaging 21 helps out a ton. I mean, the man is coming off the bench averaging 21 points per game. Who needs Giant Davis? We can draft a Nick Smith Jr. Porzingis with 20, 15, and 10 from Lonzo, 12 from John Collins, 9 from Denny Avdia, 8.5, 8, and then 7.5. So, yeah, our overall, I mean, the rotation that we have is really damn good. I really love it. So, we have the potential of winning it with Beal. We have like two years left until he's a free agent. So, if not this season, I will go another year. We'll see what happens. So, uh, we get the Miami Heat in round one. Uh, as long as Nick Smith Jr. is averaging 21 in the playoffs, I honestly think there's a good chance we might win it this year. But, like I said, you never know with the simulation. Sometimes it's on your side. Sometimes it's not. Somebody current round against Miami. And we beat them in four. So, just like that, I could have been A-seeded and lose in round one. But I didn't. Now I get the Pacers. Pacers kind of intimidate me as well. I have flashbacks every time I see the Pacers to that 10-year Cavs rebuild that I did. If you know, you know. Halliburton, Keontae George, Matherin, Jeremy Grant, Jalen Duran, Miles Turner. And uh, so I kind of like that. They got Miles Turner, Jalen Duran, Jeremy Grant. Very nice rotation. Hopefully we beat them. Somebody current round. And uh, we beat them in six. Okay. But now we get the team that obviously, as you guys know, I dread the most. The Cleveland Cavaliers. One of the most intimidating, terrifying teams of all time in 2K. They just are. It's right up there for me with the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant. They just are tough to beat, man, it feels like. They have Buddy Heald off the bench. Isaac Coro still starting stuff. Donovan Mitchell. I don't know if I beat them here. We'll give it our best old college try. We'll see what happens. Game one. They're up one to zero. They beat us by five. Up two to zero. There it is. Oh, wait. 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 Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We beat them in four. Oh, I didn't mean to say in four. We went four straight and win. All right. Here we go. Can we beat the Cleveland Cavaliers to go to the finals here? I mean, we start off in the first quarter very hot. We win the first quarter by 20. So if we let them back in this game, I'm going to be vitally disappointed. But we do beat them, and we're in the NBA Finals, ladies and gentlemen. Porzingis with 24 and 7. John Murray at 28, 8 and 10. Absolute W. Love to see it. 32 from Nick. Man, he's been the weapon. He's been the secret weapon we all needed. The man is just an absolute stud in the simulation right now. And now we get the Memphis Grizzlies. So we have Jaron Jackson, Desmond Bain, John Morant. Such a very fun big three. Jose Alvarado off their bench also brings kind of some toughness there. I mean, let's see what happens. Game one, we're up 1-0. Beat them by 10. 33 for Porzingis. Next Smith Jr. with 18. Game two, they even it up. Game three, we're up 2-1. Game four, 2-2. Two two. Okay, game five is going to be a big one. I'm going to sim cast on this one. And, the, you know, maybe go A-man rotation here. Let's give Nick Smith Jr. even more minutes. It kicks out Gafford, but uh, you know what? I think it'll be worth it. So game five, now or never, got to win it. This is a huge game five. You know, majority, I think the statistics show that whoever wins game five usually wins the series. So uh, it's not looking good for us, though, boys. Oh, we take the lead. Take it back. We lose. We lose. Okay. Got to force a game seven back to DC. This is our best chance, man. If we don't win it here, I don't know if we win it in this video. Well, I guess Nick Smith Jr. is only going to get better, but, uh, you know, Bradley Beal and Porzingis might get worse. So, yeah, and uh, we may not get past the Cavaliers again, and we lose 121 and 124. So, got to the finals, and it looked for just a second. We had a glimmer of hope there. We end up losing in six to the Grizzlies. I think we run it back one more year. Same rotation. Clearly, we have found something that works, but uh, it'll just be interesting to see if next year it does work or not. 63 and 19 record season so feeling pretty good about that Lonzo Ball making all offensive first team again Bradley Beal of course did go down in overall but he has the rest of the roster to kind of carry him and uh 22 points per game and he's still an 86 so it's not like he's down bad horrendous or anything like that Colin 13 nine and a half nine and a half and the next man junior actually led the way as your six did he not get six man of the year like that's crazy I kind of did unless he's starting which maybe he took over for Beal but no, no six-man reward given to Nick Smith Jr. But uh, yeah, he's not starting, which is kind of crazy. But regardless, he's our secret weapon off the bench. And look who we grab in the first round, the Cavaliers. That is crazy to me. I mean, we beat them last year, but to get them as the eighth seed, I'm not feeling good about this. Peace, guys. I, I can't stand this game. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.